Hey guys, and welcome to Slash Rex Game. So I'm sure at some point in time you've decided to create some sort of zombie shooter game. You're shooting at zombies, the bullet hits, the zombie takes damage, the bullet destroys itself, and that's that. But then, perhaps further along the line, you decided, well, zombies are technically soft targets, so shouldn't the bullet pass straight through them and maybe do damage to other zombies? But then you came across this problem. You shoot a bullet, it hits a zombie, and then it does more than the damage you want it to do. Say I'm supposed to do 10% per collision. And here, it's done a whole lot more. So what's actually happening is that collision event is being checked every step. So as the bullet passes through the target, it is doing damage every single time. So we need a way to create some sort of smart bullet that doesn't do damage to targets it's already hit. So today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do that. And it's actually relatively simple. So let's jump straight into this and I can show you what can be done. So before we begin, I'm going to introduce you to the current state of the project. We have some sprites here. We've got our player. Oh, let's drag this to the right. We've got a bullet, which is a little tiny dot. We've got our target, sort of like a crash test dummy thing I put together. Pretty cool. And we have the track that this target runs on. Uh, don't worry about that. But anyway, those are our sprites. Then if I go to fonts, I've got a small font to draw a health percentage. I've got objects, the player. He just does some movement, some shooting. If you don't know how to do that kind of stuff, check out my other tutorials. Uh, links are in the description as well on the banner. Then our bullet pretty much just destroys itself when it gets out of the room. So now if we go into object target, we've got some code here. The create, we're just giving it a health and some code to initialize the movement. Then our step event just changes the direction of movement when it hits certain limits. Then in our draw event, I am just drawing out the health bar as well as the percentage as a value next to it. Cool. So now if we go into the collision event between object target and object bullet, we go in here. This is sort of the code that we have. If target health is greater than zero, then decrease target health by 10. But the problem being that if our bullet is moving slow enough to collide multiple times with the instance of object target, it means this piece of code is going to be executed multiple times. So we need to somehow make sure that every subsequent collision is ignored. And the way I want to do that is store some sort of list of IDs in each instance of object bullet, therefore creating a smart bullet that remembers what it has hit. So that if it collides again with an instance that it remembers hitting previously, it'll just ignore it. So I'm going to go into object bullet. I'm going to have a create event. And in here, I'm going to create a DS list called collision IDs. There we go. So every time this bullet collides with an instance of object target, I'm going to store the ID of that instance of object target in here. And then we're going to be querying this list to see if an instance has been collided with already. Cool, so that's all we do to the bullet. I'm going to come back here to the collision event. And let's expand this a little. Okay. So obviously we don't want to do anything if there's no health. So we don't have to worry about the outer limits of this block. We only want to be inside it. If we do take away health, well then let's add the ID of the instance of object target to that collision ID's list stored in object bullet. So that's what's going to happen after the health is removed. DS list add to which DS list its collision IDs. We're going to add our ID of this target. One thing to note, this variable doesn't belong to object target, it belongs to object bullet. And because it's out of scope of this block of code, we need to use the word keyword other. We need to put that prefix there. All right, because in this event, we have two instances of two objects interacting. The one being an instance of object target, and the other one being an instance of object bullet. So if we want to talk about the other instance, in other words, the instance of the object listed here, we have to use the keyword other. Do remember that, so it jumps out of the scope of object target and into the scope of the other instance it's colliding with. So once we've done that, now we need to make sure that we never execute this block of code if this ID already exists in this list. So we're going to do that up here. I'm going to use um, DS list find index and again other dot collision IDs. Put that in there. Let's bring this up. Then our value we're going to find is ID, which is the instance ID of the instance of object target that's being collided with. All right. So 
this function returns a value, a position value, of the ID it finds. So it could be 1, 2, 3, n. It could go on forever, depending on how big this list is. If it can't find the specific value in this list, it's going to return minus 1. So that's something we can take advantage of. If it equals minus 1, then it means the value wasn't found. Therefore, this bullet hasn't collided with this instance of object target yet. Therefore, we can continue doing this piece of code. See? And then once it's collided for the first time, it'll add it to the list, and then it'll move on. And then if it collides with this instance again, this will fail, and it'll skip everything here and do no damage to the target. So let's click OK. OK, save the project, and let's test this out. So with that little piece of code in place, it means bullets only do the correct amount of damage that we want them to do, irrespective of how many times they technically collide with an instance of an object. So that's pretty cool, guys. So that about wraps up bullet penetration. It's really a similar thing to soft targets. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on armored targets, which is like the exact opposite, where bullets hitting an armored target do not go through the armored target. Perhaps they reduce some armor. And then when armor is depleted, then it acts as a soft target. I'm going to be doing something like that. It's going to be pretty cool, especially if you're new to Game Maker and shooting. It's going to be great for whatever project you're working on. So please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, send me a PM or put them in the comments below. If there's anything you didn't understand, feel free to ask me a question. I can get back to you whenever I have time. You can find the project files straight in the description. And check out my playlist of some of my other tutorials. I'll help you out in actually making any game that you could possibly want. If you like this video, as well as many of my other ones, check out my Patreon campaign. I do appreciate your support in every way. You can share my channel with your friends and help me expand. If you can, that'd be great. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.